All right, you guys, I brought my laptop because I feel like there's a lot to unpack in this episode, but I'm gonna try to do it as concisely as possible. So let's go. We already know from the first episode that this season is gonna be a lot about men and women and their relationships, right? So let's dissect it. Let's take a look at all these different man-woman relationships we've got going on, okay? First, let's look at Cameron and Daphne, who I didn't realize Daphne had a name. I thought her name was Honey. I thought it was a comment on the way super rich men treat their wives who don't really have names. Cameron and Daphne are obviously the wealthy couple. They're relatively ignorant of what's going on in the world. There's a lot of hating on them from Harper and Ethan, or at least a lot from Harper. But in this episode, we have a really sweet, tender moment where we realize that Cameron is a real person and he does care about his wife when they're discussing the birth of their second child. And then Cameron basically tells Harper while they're on the beach, he says, we're not materialistic pigs despite what you might think. And then she says, what? I don't think that, I don't think that. And then later on, when they're both in the water, he apologizes to her and then he kind of swims away. Here's my thing. I feel like Cameron is one of those, he's really good looking, he's rich. He is being nice, but it also is like, are you trying to sleep with her? Like, are you trying to have an affair with her? Like what? It's a little strange, but then we have the moment at the table with his wife where he tells her that he loves her. But we know that further down in the season, he's gonna have an affair with the prostitutes. So it's kind of confusing to get a beat on Cameron. Everyone in the show is playing a stereotype and I think they're doing an interesting twist on him and Daphne. I really like Daphne. I think so far she comes off as the kind of ditzy wife who doesn't have any problems and doesn't understand what's wrong with the world. But she has this really insightful moment at the end of the episode where she says, you know, I think some women cut off their husband's nuts and then they wonder why they're not attracted to them. <laughs> Once again, I think the show is great and just like social commentary. And clearly she has some power in their relationship and I would still say that their relationship is genuine. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, moving right along. We also see Harper and Ethan. Now, so far Harper has been annoying. She's been very stuck up. She's been very judgmental. She's just been hard to like. In this episode, she wakes up alone. Ethan is going for a run and then he comes back and kind of takes care of himself. And uh, she's like, well, why didn't you ask me? Like we're on vacation. Like you couldn't wait. Then they just get into an argument. Basically Harper's like, well, I was trying to say that we have a good relationship. And Ethan's like, mm -hmm, yeah. But what's interesting is that I really do think that Daphne summed up Harper and Ethan's relationship pretty well. And that it seems like at some point Harper just kind of ripped Ethan to shreds. And and now he doesn't care and now he's not that interested in her. They're a very odd couple and I think where they think Cameron and Daphne are fake and not truly in love and the two of them are it seems to be the other way around. And I think Harper has that realization by the end of the episode because once again Cameron and Daphne are enjoying the physical aspect of their love and she and Ethan are not. And Ethan is not interested. Another relationship in this episode is Portia and Albie. Now I think Albie is adorable. Albie has officially stolen my heart and if he's single, HMU. Albie and Portia have breakfast because Portia accidentally catches Tanya and her husband having breakfast and so she kind of scares away and catches Albie, they sit together. Then Bert, in entirely inappropriate kind of, but also nice way, invites Daphne to go on a walk with them to some Coliseum. So they go to the the amphitheater they kind of spend the day together and then later on in the episode Albie and Portia have dinner together and Albie says he just wants to be good like he doesn't want to be like his father he doesn't want to treat women the way his father does and he says that his father's basically had multiple affairs and his mother finally found out and she is angry Albie is clearly sweet and kind of oh look there he is right there he's so cute he's clearly like kind. Portia says, well, I just want to be young. You know, I kind of want to get off the internet. I want to get into my real life. I just want to do something crazy. And Albie's like, mm-hmm, yeah. So already you can kind of see that Portia is going to be not impressed, not interested in Albie. But I think Albie's a gem. I think he's so sweet. Maybe it was just me being ridiculous. So that's their relationship. You can tell that's about to head for an explosion too. I don't see murder in their relationship yet. Maybe, I don't know. We know that there are multiple bodies found on the beach. Who's killing who? Clearly some men are gonna kill some women and clearly some women are gonna kill some men. Next relationship we have Dominic and Lucia, Mia, and then his wife who's not there. So in this episode we find out that Bert doesn't really know why Dominic and his wife aren't together. And Dominic's like, you know that I had an affair. You know that I had multiple affairs. Bert's like, eh, it's not that big of a problem, you know? Just kind of apologize fix it. It's not real. You know, we can tell Bert represents this old idea of you're a man. You got to sow your wild oats when before you get married and after you get married. You need to keep it clean. Keep it tidy. Don't rub your face in it. But you know, it's fine. She'll forgive you. You know, you've been married for 25 years. How could she leave you? She can't do that. 
Talmudic is like, well, I think she can. And he's kind of feeling bad and a little guilty about it. So later on in the evening, Lucia and Mia show up and he gives them free reign to the hotel. So they spend the whole day in the hotel. Then they come back to Dominic's room and he's like, hey, like I'm really not feeling it. Like I'm kind of feeling like a guilty conscience. And so I don't really want to do this. And then he says that he has some compulsion issues. And then he says he even has an addiction, a sexual addiction in case you weren't picking up on that. He tells them no, and then Lucia's like, but my friend's here, we're here, we just wanna say thank you. And so of course he's like, okay ladies. Then we finally get to Tanya and Greg, and I think this is the most heartbreaking one. So they spend the day doing that. Now they ride on this Vespa, which is like absolutely horrifying because they don't fit. They have dinner, and he's like, listen, I wanted you to have a really good day before I tell you the bad news. She's like, what's the bad news? He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to go back to Denver. I don't know why I was thinking Delaware. I'm gonna have to go back to Denver, and um, well, I gotta go, I gotta go save the country. Company. She's like, well, they can't send someone else, blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, I can't. Then they get into an argument and she's like, well, why do you have to work? Why don't you just quit your job? And he's like, because you signed a prenup. So if you leave me, I still have to feed myself. I still have to survive out here. And so she's upset about that. He tells her that she changes her mind pretty often and she kind of throws people away like dirty clothes. And so he just kind of isn't feeling very significant to her in her life. She's pretty sad and heartbroken. She tells him she hates him and walks out the restaurant. Later on in the episode, we find Tanya alone in bed. She gets up, she hears him talking to someone out the window and so she hears him say yeah she believed me as usual don't worry i'm coming home soon yeah i love you too greg is having an affair now this could be a real twist and maybe he has a secret child that he loves that he's gonna come home to visit but i don't think that's gonna be the case i think he's having an affair and this breaks tanya's heart and i really feel for tanya like she's so likable she's just great and it just makes me sad that you know Greg's a jerk, but Greg has been mean and rude to her this whole season so far. Granted, it's only been two episodes, but he's been a jerk the whole time. So Tanya's definitely in a rut. So my predictions on who I think is gonna die. I think Greg's gonna die, because I don't really like Greg. I think Cameron's gonna die, but it's gonna be like an accidental kind of whoopsie death. We know that there are multiple bodies on the beach, right? So how are we gonna solve this mystery, guys? I don't know, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. So like this video if you like this video. Comment, subscribe, and click the bell so you'll be notified of when we drop reviews of movies and other TV shows. We do a lot, but we can always do more. Thanks guys, bye.